coming up next on KPBS Evening Edition. This week, the Navy is sending out pink slips to thousands of sailors. We'll talk with the commander of Naval Base San Diego. And the pit bull attack in Valley Center is raising questions about whether the breed should be banned. We'll have a look at the debate over bully breeds. KPBS Evening Edition starts now. Hello, thanks for joining us. I'm Joanne Ferrian. And I'm Dwayne Brown. Occupy San Diego protesters clashed with police today as they attempted to set up voter registration tables in the Civic Center Plaza. This comes a day after police arrested a former congressional candidate in the plaza while he was registering folks to vote. KPBS reporter Katie Orr has the story. About a dozen police officers gathered at the Civic Center Plaza today to watch over roughly 50 Occupy San Diego protesters. At issue, whether protesters could set up this large table to help register voters. The table is similar to one former congressional candidate Ray Lutz was using on Tuesday to register voters when police arrested him. Police say Lutz was arrested for trespassing. His table was set up outside a private office building on the plaza and not on public property. Today, the protesters returned with the intent of setting up the table again. Attorney Rachel Scoma with the group Canvas for a Cause says the law allows them to do it. This is something we do every single day under Robbins versus Pruneyard. That's why we're able to stand in front of targets and in shopping centers uh, registering voters. Uh, and so we have a very specific interest in making sure that free speech is upheld here in this privately owned section of the Civic Center. But the police disagree. Assistant Chief Boyd Long told SCOMA registering voters was fine, but setting up the table wasn't allowed and could lead to someone being arrested. You do not have the right to have the tables here. You do have the right to be here and do voter registration, and we're going to support that. Thank you. Then treat us equally. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Officer Long. Officer Long. Has informed us. Has informed us. That we will be arrested. That we will be arrested. If we set up a table. If we set up a table. As is our right. As is our right. In this section. In this section. Of the Civic Center. Of the Civic Center. Protester John Kenny says being arrested was something he was willing to accept. They're going to have to do what they're going to have to do, but uh, most of us have agreed that we would go down over this. This is free speech at the very heart of this system. To come and take us down for this is hypocrisy defined. <laughs> It was Kenny who finally put up the table. He put it in the same location Ray Lutz had yesterday. But today's outcome was different. The police ultimately backed down, saying building management may eventually ask Kenny and the other protesters to leave. But at that moment, the police walked away, leaving the controversial table standing. That was KPBS Metro reporter Katie Orr. Members of Occupy San Diego now say they will sue C.B. Richard, Richard Ellis, the property firm that manages the site. A federal judge has rejected a request to stop a crackdown on medical marijuana dispensaries. The judge says dispensary operators and medical marijuana patients have failed to show the crackdown is unconstitutional. More than 60 percent of the collectives in San Diego and Imperial counties have closed since last month. That's when California's U.S. attorneys announced a broad effort to close the shops. They threatened to seize any property housing the, the dispensaries. Medical marijuana advocates claim the Justice Department entrapped pot providers by reversing its own policy on the drug. U.S. drug agents say they've made one of the largest pot busts ever. They found more than 32 tons of marijuana yesterday after finding another tunnel between the U.S. and Mexico. The tunnel links warehouses in Otay Mesa and Tijuana. It's 600 yards long. Officials from Immigration and Customs Enforcement say it's one of the most sophisticated tunnels they've seen, with the hydraulic lift, electric rail cars, a wooden staircase, and wood floors from one end to the other. Six people were arrested. The Weather Service says San Diego County is in for some high winds starting tonight. High wind warnings and advisories are going into effect at 10 o'clock tonight. Wind speeds will range from 20 miles per hour up to 60 miles per hour in the mountains. The windy weather is expected to stay with us until Friday afternoon. 
San Diego's population is expected to grow by more than a million people in the next 40 years, and community planners want to hear what you think is needed to accommodate the growth. This is what one of San Diego's most culturally diverse neighborhoods, City Heights, might look like in 40 years, based on the need for housing, affordability, transportation, and water consumption, among other things. People don't know what they want until they see what they don't want. That's why the San Diego Foundation has launched the Show Your Love campaign to get public feedback on important issues such as jobs, housing, and transportation. And I think as we all know, San Diego can be fragmented on some of the big topics, whether it's the airport or what to do with the existing Qualcomm Stadium site or should we build a new stadium. So we're going to the people asking their opinion on some of these big topic questions to really gain some type of a consensus or direction for the region. Over 600 people attended the community workshops. Now this online survey seeks to get tens of thousands more to voice their opinion. It's simple to use, educational, and doesn't take much time. Each of the modules are different. This is the longest. This will take you about 10 minutes. The other ones combined will take you about 10 minutes. So you know, most people should finish it in 18 to 20 minutes. And the good news is you can also go back and finish the survey at your own leisure. This campaign is the result of nearly two years of research and community input. The final results will be released in May. The website is called showyourlovesd.org. The USS Carl Vinson is finally out to sea after a late start today. The carrier's departure was delayed about three hours because of fog and a mechanical problem. The Vinson will visit the Western Pacific and Middle East. The ship leaves as the Navy is sending out layoff notices. Joanne is talking about that with her guests over at the Evening Edition Roundtable. Thousands of sailors are crossing their fingers this week in hopes that they won't lose their jobs. The Navy began layoffs last week and will let go a total of 3,000 sailors, many who are mid-career. The second round of layoffs were announced this week, and the commanding officers have a week to notify laid-off sailors, some right here in San Diego. Joining us to discuss the layoffs are Captain Winton Smith, commanding officer at Naval Base San Diego, and Mary Kirby, director at Fleet and Family Support Center Naval Base San Diego. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Captain, let's begin with why are why is the Navy laying off 3,000 sailors? Well, um, right now the Navy is... Um, overmanned by 103 percent. Many of the services are overmanned and a lot of that is the result of the buildup over the past decade uh, in support of the two wars that we've been fighting overseas. Um, we're at a state now that because we're so overmanned we now have to rebalance the force. We have to ensure that we're providing opportunity for advancement for those sailors once we're rebalanced. Um, that seems to be the, the, the reason why. Uh, how do you decide who to let go? Um, we're looking at it uh, from a standpoint of um, there are some ratings in the Navy that are overmanned. For instance, machinist mates are a good example. Um, there are some other, uh, uh, it's either based on um, overmanning or we may have had um, too many in one particular rating to support an aspect of the war. A good example of that is our master at arms, which is a law enforcement uh, element of the Navy. But, you know, we're looking at those overmanned areas and we're looking across the board at um, all of the ratings. Uh, and then we're looking at it from a performance standpoint. Uh, we're looking at it from uh, how well they, they've accomplished their job. Um, and we have three Navy bases here in San Diego County. Mm -hmm. You command one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, have you been told uh, whether or not in this phase two, you did have to tell a couple of people in phase one that they, right. were, they were not going to be reenlisted. Have That's you right. had to tell anyone this, this round? I had a total of 14 records in the first phase, of which two I had to notify. Um, and then just recently with the more senior review, um, we had 10 records of which uh, no one uh, was notified. So I think that's also, um, you know, it's reflective of the type of, uh, yeah, our, the caliber of our workforce and these folks. I mean, these are the same folks that have dedicated a lot to their country. And, you know, I was just very glad to hear that I wouldn't have to deliver that news. It's always tough when you inject change in somebody's 
life like this? We don't know yet with the other two bases what those mm -hmm. totals might be, but, but Mary, I want to bring you into the conversation now. now. This seems unusual. I think for people who perhaps aren't in the military, you think that this is a job for life, mm -hmm. that you can retire, that you'll get a pension. How, that's not happening with, with we know, with, with several sailors. H how do you cope with that? How do, how do they begin to cope with that? Well, I think that one of the things we're very proud of at Fleet and Family Support Center is we do have a lot of programs available to these folks as they make their transition. And there's a lot of elements to the transition. There's not just your job, but where are you going to live, and then all the stresses that are associated with starting a whole new life and a different sort of um, adventure for you and your family. So one of the things that the Navy has set up is several big programs Navy-wide for every sailor that's affected by the Enlisted Retention Board. There's the Shipmates to Workmates where they're hoping through job fairs and a call center to walk many of these service members into civilian positions within the Department of Defense. There's several employers that have hundreds or thousands of civilian employees and they're looking for people with these skills. This really seems to be a dilemma really for our county and maybe for the country. Just a week ago, Congressman uh, Filner was here talking about we can save money by the ending the wars, but at the same time, we don't want to see defense cuts in 2013, which, which may happen because of trigger cuts. Right. Uh, how do you deal with that? Like, how do you now say, okay, we, we want perhaps the wars to end, but we know there's collateral damage. In this case, you're going to reduce your workforce. Right. Well, I think that... Um there always has to be a rebalancing that occurs when you've when you've built up like this for wars, and we've certainly learned our lessons from the past. Um, for instance, um, when we've had instances like this where we've deployed overseas uh, in a in a wartime environment, and we've come back, um, those cuts they were severe, and they impacted people's lives, and we 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 learned from that process, and I think that now. Um, this is really, this enlisted retention uh, board, this process, has been well thought out. It's articulate. Uh, you're talking about 3,000 that are affected, but that's 3,000 worldwide. We have 74 bases worldwide. That's 1% of the Navy around the globe and a very small impact to uh, the San Diego, the metro region. Um, in the next five to ten years, we have continued growth that's going to occur. I'm, as uh, the Naval Base San Diego commanding officer, I'm preparing for the addition of new platforms, the littoral combat ship. Uh, fellow commanding officers are preparing for the joint strike fighter. So we're preparing for these new uh, platforms that are going to be joining um, uh, our bases. So there's still growth. Right. Um, we're going to have to continue this conversation yeah. later. We're out of time, and we'll invite you both back. Thank you so much, Captain Smith and Mary Kirby, for both being Thank here. Thank you. Thanks again, Joanne. When the housing bubble burst, it left behind sprawling suburban ghost towns. Some call them zombie subdivisions. Others look at the empty land and see opportunity. That story coming up from our front terrace desk in just a moment. This is KPBS Evening Edition. Hi, I'm Rick Steves, and I'll be in the KPBS studios to host a two-hour special on some of my favorite European waterways. We'll explore the fabled Dalmatian coast from dramatic Dubrovnik to salty Adriatic island ports. Then we'll travel to the west of Norway for a sail under towering fjord cliffs and a hike on powerful glaciers. And we'll top it off with some fun in the Spanish sun on the Costa del Sol. I hope you can join us. Coming up Thursday at 8 on KPBS. Tuesday at 10 on KPBS. KPBS Evening Edition is made possible by Joan and Erwin Jacobs and by
Home builders have made a living expanding the edges of cities such as Las Vegas, but many construction projects across the southwest have screeched to a halt. Home prices and new construction are a fraction of what they once were. From our front terrace desk, Peter O'Dowd explains the mystery behind abandoned subdivisions known as zombies. Not that kind of zombie, this kind of zombie. Out here on the westernmost edge of Phoenix, it's easy to find empty land once prepped for two by fours and work crews. These are uh, kind of ghost-like wraiths and they're all around the valley. There are hundreds of these little parcels of land that if you're not paying attention, you won't even notice them. Realtor Greg Swan has seen neighborhoods like this boom and bust. This is going to be the water line, sewer lines for the house. They're all capped over so they don't get mud down them. This is the phone company. This one here. City planners and neighbors see these piles of dirt as a nuisance. Swan and the real estate industry in general believe it's an opportunity. Phoenix will grow again, they say. Some project a city of eight million. Somebody eventually will develop this land and it'll turn into houses. It's already platted for houses, it's already planned for houses. It's an ambitious goal. Across this vast metropolis, land experts say up to one million dirt lots in central Arizona were in some stage of approval for new homes when the market crashed. People are leaving. Research shows after the bust, more than one third of zip codes in major Sunbelt cities saw population declines. Parts of California and Nevada were also hit hard. And across the Southwest, demand for new suburban style single family houses has dried up. So now what? One of the interesting questions you could ask is are, are we in a recession? Or in fact, is this not a recession? This is actually a transformation of our economy. Jim Hallway says it's sort of like triage. Some of these zombie subdivisions are so far flung and so undesirable, they may need to be abandoned and sent back to natural desert. Other deserted lots will rebound with the market. And just as planned, this land will become new houses. Then a third option. Ask ourselves, is it time to re-envision and re-plan our intention for the land? Is what's actually coming now a whole new economy, which may, may eventually evolve a new style of living and what we demand for our housing and our employment? I, I don't know the answer to that. At some point, that will come. In some places, it already has. The city of Maricopa, south of Phoenix, literally grew up overnight. This is a pretty typical stalled subdivision in the city of Maricopa. During boom times, the government once issued 900 housing permits in a month. Nobody's really building much of anything in Maricopa these days, and planners have agreed to change course. Someday soon, this land set aside for 200 houses will turn into something else. Maricopa is smarter than it was. Uh, granted, we're only eight years old, but we're smarter than we were five years ago. We're smarter today than we were yesterday. Maricopa's Brent Billingsley says the Catholic Church bought the dirt and all the wires and pipes in the ground but it had no intention of building homes. The land was rezoned for mixed-use development. Now, instead of tumbleweed and dust, there are plans for a private school, a new church, shops at ground level, and loft-style housing above. This type of creative redevelopment just didn't happen when Maricopa was booming. Everyone has taken this, this turn, this chance, this opportunity to kind of catch our breath and take a look at how we want to grow in the future. It will still take several years of construction in Maricopa to swallow the 16,000 lots set aside for residential development. Police stations, soccer fields, and schools will replace some of those zombies. It's an acknowledgement that times have changed and that building a community takes more than new homes. That's reporter Peter O'Dowd from our Front Terrace Desk. For more stories about sprawl in the Southwest, go to Front Terrace Desk. Org. Are pit bulls more deadly than other breeds? Joanna's talking about it with her guest over at the Evening Edition Roundtable.
They've been banned or restricted in some cities. Even the military has outlawed, outlawed them on some bases, including Camp Pendleton. Are pit bulls more dangerous than other dogs? An attack this weekend in San Diego County has some people asking that question. Two men jogging in Valley Center Sunday afternoon were mauled by a pack of pit bulls. One of the men attacked told the San Diego Union Tribune he had chunks torn from his legs by the pit bulls and said he thought he would die during the mauling. Four of those pit bulls were put down earlier this week. Joining me to talk about the incident and the breed is Dan D'Souza, Lieutenant with the County of San Diego Department of Animal Services. Lieutenant, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. First, let's talk about the attack on Sunday. How, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the extent of the injuries? You know, what we know is, you know, one of the victims was life flighted off from the property. That is something that's very, very serious. You do not see that in most dog bite cases. So the injuries that he sustained were very severe, and we hope and wish for the best for him. What do we know about the dogs? The four dogs that we seized from the owner's house Sunday night, they were seven-month-old pit bull mixes. You know, what they were mixed with, who knows? You know, but the owner did request that they did surrender them and did request that they be euthanized, and we have followed through with that. That has not stopped our investigation, though. We're still following through to find out, were these actually the dogs involved? You know, if not, where are the dogs that did this? And then what charges, if any, could be, a, could be a pursued in this case? So are there any laws in San Diego County with regard to pit bulls or breed-specific laws? No, there are no breed-specific laws in, in San Diego County. And the state of California actually says you cannot have breed-specific laws regarding a a breed. So you, the state of California you cannot ban or outlaw pit bulls or Great Danes or Doberman Pinschers. There is a law that says you can make those dogs mandatory spayed and neutered, but there is nothing, there's no ban in effect in California. We know that in other cities there are bans like this, the military, even here, Camp Pendleton, there are. Um, and one of the reasons, when, when we look at statistics across the country in terms of dogs and fault and fatal attacks, I want to quote just a couple of numbers here. One comes from dogbites.org. 33 U.S. fatal dog attacks occurred in 2010, um, and 67% of those attacks were pit bulls. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, back in 98, they looked at species-specific dog attacks. 27 people died of dog bite attacks, and more than half of those cases, uh, pit bull-type dogs and Rottweilers were involved. Are you concerned, as somebody who works for the county animal control, that these are dangerous dogs? No, because we don't think it's a dangerous breed. There are dangerous dogs in our community, and those run the gamut from the small dogs to the big dogs. Pit bulls in San Diego County, on average, bite of the reported bites, they're only about 14% of all the dog bites that we receive. They are the highest breed, however, but only 14%. What percent of the total breeds do they account for, though? Is that's, it just 2% across the country, well, That's the very hard part. We can't count that because we don't know how many pit bulls are in the community, so we don't know if they're biting a disproportionate amount or not. And isn't the part of the problem is their jaw and the strength of the jaw? So when you have maybe a German Shepherd that bites you, another dog that bites you, it doesn't do the same damage as when a pit bull bites? First and foremost, they do not have locking jaws. You know, that's been a misnomer and a myth for a very long time. They do have tremendous jaw strength, like most of the larger dogs do, like the Rottweilers. Even the German Shepherds have very strong jaws. So any big dog that bites obviously has the greater ability to cause more harm than the Chihuahua or the Shih Tzu. That being said, I've seen you know children substantially injured by Shih Tzus as well. I think that when you look at the statistics, there are people at home saying they account for a disproportionate number of fatal dog attacks, even a dispro disproportionate number of dog bites here in San Diego County, that people are going to have questions about, the, you know, in terms of safety and in, in terms of these dogs. But it, 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 we, can't, we can't discriminate against a breed on an action of one or two dogs. The last fatality we had in San Diego County was from a German Shepherd that killed the, 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 the little family boy. Uh, you know, are we going to look to ban those as well? You know, it is very much an individual dog and very much an individual owner. That's where the responsibility and the fault lies, not with the entire breed. Before we go, we don't have a lot of time, so when we talk about the owner then, what potentially could happen to an owner if they're found guilty of, of doing something wrong, in, in this case, for example? For instance, the Valley Center case and the case with Mrs. Mendoza, you know, they're facing a variety of county charges for just the dogs running loose to dogs attacking them. To you know, for Mrs. Mendoza's case, felony charges were filed on that because we could show that they had 
maintain dogs, they knew the dangerous propensities, and they did not protect the public. We will, we will be looking into that for the Valley Center case as well. Lieutenant D'Souza, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. California's public schools chief donned the blue and gold of Grossmont High School today. He came to San Diego to promote fitness by jogging with students. Tom Torlickson says sound bodies help create sound minds. Results of the statewide physical fitness test released today show only a third of California children are physically fit. Torlickson urged Grossmont students to help raise the bar. In just a moment, we'll have some of your feedback on a giant sculpture proposed for the Navy Broadway Pier in downtown San Diego. This is KPBS Evening Edition. I'm Gwen Eiffel. On the next news hour, will a payroll tax cut for workers be extended? Plus, what happens when patents expire on popular prescription drugs? That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. The American people have named PBS the most trusted source of news and public affairs for the eighth year in a row. Trust. The American people have spoken. Thank you. On Masterpiece Classic. Six o'clock! Step into Downton Abbey. Downton is a great house, and the Crawleys are a great family. Do you know the new heir? It's Robert's third cousin. I thought Lady Mary was the heir. Girls can't inherit. Don't you care about Downton? I've given my life to Downton. Can we let them change me? Why are you so against him? He isn't one of us. Welcome to Downton. Downton Abbey on Masterpiece Classic. Welcome back to the Public Square on KPBS Evening Edition. Our media partner, 10 News, reports San Diegans had a chance to comment on the proposed Wings of Freedom sculpture last night at a public meeting. The 500-foot sculpture is part of an overall plan to turn the Navy Pier into Veterans Park. The proposed sculpture got some mixed reviews last night, everything from rabbit ears to iconic too ugly. Phil from Fallbrook wrote to us. He says the sculpture looks like a piece of 1930s kitsch. He suggests holding an international competition and asking for other suggestions. But he adds, please, no sales. Now, Phil sent his comment in the mail. So nice to receive a handwritten letter these days. But you can also contact us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or you can email me directly, jferian at kpbs.org. And now, Dwayne has a recap of tonight's top stories. There was a confrontation between police and Occupy San Diego protesters today. They wanted to set up a table to register voters. Now the protesters say they will sue the property company that manages the site. U.S. drug agents say they've made a record-setting pot bust at the border. More than 32 tons of marijuana was found on the U.S. side of an underground tunnel. It's the second tunnel found in the Otay Mesa area in less than two weeks. And strong gusty winds are expected, especially in the mountain and desert areas. A wind advisory for San Diego County goes up at 10 o'clock tonight. The Weather Service says some areas could see gusts up to 60 miles per hour. You can watch and comment on any of the stories you saw tonight on our website, kpbs.org slash evening edition. Thanks for joining us. You have a great night. <laughs>